I'll present uh, Hometer, and Hometer is an uh, organization in, in land restoration, degraded lands of the Sahel region. Uh, and I'll present the, the activities we do. So we have these initial activities of water harvesting measures and uh, reforestation. But the final goal, of course, is ecosystem restoration and res restoring the livelihoods of the people there in that region. Uh, we look uh, for the, the Burkina Faso region where we have a good monitoring case and where we can show that biodiversity and people really benefit from the, from the projects. So firstly, Burkina uh, still has lots and lots of lands which degrade annually for estimates are for nearly 500,000 hectares a year. And so the, the restoration targets for land degradation neutrality are for 5 million of hectares of land. So that's quite an impressive figure. And then when we look to the cause, when we look actually to the lands, we see that overgrazing is uh, everywhere causing that vegetation uh, goes away and that water and wind take away the land and the lands degrade. So that's the, the major cause. And it's an important thing to keep in mind next to the wood logging and the, the gold mining and other pressures which are definitely present also. So who is Homiter? Homiter is a social enterprise uh, who is active now in Burkina Faso, in Mali and in Senegal. And we, we have local uh, organization or people who are capable of restoring 15,000 hectares a year. And so by now, we since we are active since 2016, we have 40,000 hectares of degraded land which are in restoration now. And our model is based on two axes, home et terre, so man and the land. And, and man is in one element, the cause of the degradation, but also the solution. So Hometer uh, makes contracts for 30 years with the local communities in uh, partnership contracts um, to restore for each village at least uh, 250 hectares of degraded lands. And we are structured in, a, in like a, a business relationship, a business model to make a merit for the people and merit for, for, for uh, working things out. And, and so the economic value must be in the productive forest. So, so we, we look for forest products to be the, the, the value behind it. And we have a structured program for it. And um, we bring immediately uh, field agents and, and a whole structural organization to the to the communities. Um, so the second axis is the land. So we, we need an ecosystem approach. And in the first place for these degraded lands, we, we, we start with uh, increasing water infiltration, of course. Uh, and then uh, we, we do the reforestation with uh, seeds that are collected around the area. And ma major thing is also the organizing the animal grazing in the landscape. So we have to look for where in the landscape the animals can go in a, in a, in a good way for, for the vegetation and for the lands. And for all this program, we have a, a full monitoring in place. And of course, we look also to the technical and, and all capacity of market and, and, and supply chain for, for organizing all this. And that makes it in a whole a well-structured program for which the, the, the villagers, the people, the local people, collect uh, the seeds and, and prepare the seeds and do the seeding of the sites with us. And um, from, from the organization, we organize uh, the, the, the works, but also the monitoring and, and, and the support and training of the people. And for this monitoring, um, we, we have a whole team of foresters which go to the field, but also we collect uh, uh, remote sensing data, of course. Uh, we collect data on trees, but also on vegetation, on soil, and on the biodiversity of the sites. And there's, of course, an additional socioeconomic monitoring for scholarity and things like that, uh, which I will not deal here. So uh, for the monitoring for the Burkina Faso region, so we have actually uh, two, two parts. So we have the, the range, the, uh, the parkland sites in, in the cent north central region, and we have the Sahelian region. So half of the sites are more to the south in the parklands and half of these sites are in, in the Sahelian semi-arid region uh, of, of the north of Burkina. And when we see a three-year-old three year sites, we already see that the, the diversity which is 
uh, corresponding to the to the published accumulation curves of diversity of these dry forests of this region. So we we see that when 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 we started uh, three years ago on such a site of degraded land, we see that we are on on, on a good track of reaching the, the the natural ecosystem there. And when we look to uh, diversity elements, so uh, these graphs show on on the left the the tree diversity and and. For the two regions, so you have the parkland region and Sahel region, and for the parkland region, we see that diversity on these sites gradually increases. Um, when we start off um, on the plots, we have um, like um, eight species. That's more or less the average of, of the diversity that we see. And then we see gradual increase and, and the, the, the plots are 50 by 50 meters. So on a site, a site of uh, three years old, we find uh, more than 20 species in, in the parkland regions. And that's also the picture shows in this parkland region, of course, there's lots of small woodlands who are still very diverse in, in that region. And another picture we have in the Sahel region, where actually tree diversity uh, lowers during the first years, because we start, start off with seeding eight species, but and due to these harsh conditions, this lowers to five to six uh, species on, on, on these plots of 50 by 50 meters. So, so on a site, we end up with some 10 species, which is more or less the, the average, more or less the number of, of um, trees that you would expect in a Sahel um, savanna, woody savanna grasslands. Um, so that's the, the tree diversity, which uh, shows a, a difference, but also vegetation cover is uh, the opposite, actually, where, where in the in the parkland region we start off with very low uh, vegetation cover, and it it increases only slowly because in in the parkland regions the degraded soils have hard crusts and on the plantosol and and the compacted lixisol soils, which are very hard to colonize for grasses and for for other species. Where in contrast, in the Sahel region we see an immediate increase and an immediate full recovery actually of the East Savannah grassland because the grass seeds are present from the surroundings and because the, the, the sandy soils are also more susceptible of, of, of restoring to, to a, a full vegetation cover. And this vegetation cover is of course for restoring these degraded lands, the, the central aspect. So, so in the Sahel site, it, 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 goes, it goes quicker, but uh, even if tree diversity is not, um, increasing in, in, in these cases. So this is uh, uh, showing off that, that there's good results and in, in, in the diversity, but we also see it in, in the recolonization of the sites. And we know that these sites are important for many tree species uh, from both migra migratory species from, from the European, like the, the spotted flycatcher or, or the European turtle dove or the red-headed shrikes. Um, but also for local species that we see coming back to the sites like the bee eaters and, and the warblers. And even many reptiles come immediately back to, to our restoration sites. So, so we, we have clear signs that the, the ecosystem restoration is going really fast on these sites and, and, and we're very uh, lucky and, and, and happy for that. So um, I think I can conclude that it's not just about uh, planting trees, uh, we, we, we really look for the diversity of the, the ecosystem and uh, not only in the species we choose, we choose for the local seeding and not only in, in, in uh, the follow up of just the soil or just uh, the, the, the numbers of trees, we also look at the diversity of trees. So that's uh, a major thing. So which I understood from, from the other speakers, but which uh, organizations like ours really keep in mind. Thank you.